Hello, my name is Christopher George and I'm a peer tutor here at SNHU. Welcome. In this guide, we'll be going over some tips on developing a programmer mindset, as well as putting these tips to use in a simple project. First, let's take a look at our problem statement. As you can see here, we need a program that asks the user's name and a list of items. Then we need to count the number of apples in that list and print to the console, name has number of apple slash apples. To simplify this problem, let's first break down the problem into smaller components that we can work with. First, we need to get the user's name and a list of items from the user. Next, we need to count the instances in the list of the word apple. After this, we need to add s to apple if there are more than one apples. Finally, we need to piece it together into a string with all the required fields. Breaking down problems into smaller and smaller pieces can make a big problem easier to tackle. If the problem is still difficult to grasp, you could break these smaller problems down even further. Next, we need to figure out some of the logic. To help do this, I put together this flowchart. As you can see here, the first thing I do is declare some variables. So I have username, word list, current word, and apple num as variables. Next, I need to get the username and get the word list from the user. Next, I set the current word variable to the first word in the word list. After this, I start my loop. So the first thing the loop does is checks to see if the current word is equal to apple. If it is, it adds one to the apple num and loops back around. If it's not, it does nothing and loops back around. Then, it checks to see if current word is the last word in the user list. If it is, it stops the loop. If it's not, it continues. And then finally, it sets the current word to the next word in the word list. This is so that it can iterate through the list, and so eventually it'll work its way through every word in the word list. After this, we need to check if we need to print apples, plural, or apple, not plural. To do this, we check to see if apple number is equal to one. If so, we print username has one apple. If not, we print username has apple num apples. This is so that we can get the formatting right, depending on what apple num actually is. Now that we have some of the logic figured out and the problem is within our understanding, we can begin to figure out some of the details. To do this, I have written out some pseudocode for this problem. First, we ask the user for the username and the word list and set those as variables. Next, we use a for loop to iterate through word list and set current word as every word in word list. After this, Every single loop, we check to see if current word is equal to apple. If so, add one to apple number. Finally, we output username plus has plus apple num plus apple slash apples. Now that we've figured out some of the logic, we can actually start to code the project. Now it's important to take your time not to rush things and to test your code frequently. First, let's start by actually grabbing our pseudocode and pasting it directly into our IDE. Here, we are using PyCharm. So with our pseudocode posted, let's start writing some code. First, I'm actually going to write some variables right at the start, uh, before these input statements here. So here, I've written username, current word, word list, and apple num. As you can see, username is a string, current word is a string, word list is a list, and apple num is an integer. Next, let's make these input statements. So I can start by setting the username variable. So let's say username is equal to input, please enter your name, colon space for formatting. Now, something to note about input statements is they kind of have two uses. So not only do they take user input, but they also act like a print statement. And so this statement here is equivalent to this right here with an empty input function. So that's just something to keep in mind. Next, let's set this word list variable. Word list is equal to input. Please enter your list of words. Colon space. 
And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to convert it into a list right off the bat using the split function. And what this does is it will split a string along some character. For instance, I can put a space character here and it will split the whole string along the space character into a list of words. So if I put say car space apple space flashlight, it'll come out with a list car apple flashlight. And that list is more useful to me right now than a string would be. Next, let's get started on this loop. So this pseudocode calls for a for loop here. Now this is kind of complex and might require some research. And it's always important to do research on topics that you don't understand as far as programming. But it is always important not to copy directly because it might not work. There's all kinds of issues that could come from that. And even if you just write it out in its entirety, you'll almost always learn more from writing it out than if you were just to copy and paste it. So let's get started with this for loop. For current word in word list colon. And that is our for loop without any content. Let me explain this for loop. What, what's happening here is I have this list of words word list. And I have this variable current word. What happens with each loop is current word is set to a word in word list. For instance, on the first loop, it'll be set to the first word on the second loop, it'll be set to the second word. And we can do all kinds of things with current word every single time it loops. So let me actually redefine word list real quick for a quick example. So I have word list is equal to car, apple, flashlight. So what will happen here is that in the first loop, current word will be equal to car. In the second loop, current word will be equal to apple. And in the third loop, current word will be equal to flashlight. So next, let's go to this next part of the pseudocode here, which is this if statement, which adds one to apple number whenever apple is detected. So if current word is equal to apple, apple num is equal to apple num plus one. Okay. So as I mentioned before, this will look at each word and word list and set current word to each word, starting from the first word to the last word. Every time it loops, it will see if current word is equal to the string apple. And if so, it will set the apple number to the apple number plus one, which just essentially adds one every single time it detects an apple. Now, let's start on this output here. So I'm going to have an if statement here that has two separate outputs because I'm not sure if the number is going to be equal to one or if it's going to be plural. Even if apple number is equal to zero, I need to have plural apples. For example, username has one apple or username has zero apples. So let me start writing that. So if apple num is equal to one, then I can print user name plus space has for formatting. Now, because that I know apple number in this case is equal to one, I can just write the rest of it without even checking what apple number is. So I can say username has one apple. Next with the else, I know that this doesn't have one apple. It's going to either have more than one apple or less than one apple. So I can print out print user name plus space has space plus apple num plus space apples. So that should do it for the output. 
Now, let's test our code. So if we click the Run button, so the first prompt pops up. Please enter your name, Chris. Please enter your list of words. Let's do car, apple, flashlight. So that seems to work. Notice there was exactly one apple. Now let's try it with more than one apple so that the second case fires. So start again, Chris. Let's say car, apple, apple, apple. And as you can see here, this time it actually throws an error. So now to solve this error, we can kind of walk through the code to see what's happening. So I have a suspicion it's somewhere in this section of code because it only happened when it printed it out. So like it's not up here, otherwise there would have been an error sooner. So if apple number is equal to one, print out print username has one apple. That worked successfully, so that's okay. So it must be in this else statement where it's print username plus has plus apple num plus apples. Now, what this error might be caused by is this apple num variable here. If you recall, we initially set that up as an integer. And Python really doesn't like it when you add integers and strings together. So to solve this, I can cast this apple num's integer to a string using the string function. So string or str. So now it's username plus has plus str apple num plus apples. Let's try this again and see if it worked. So let me do Chris. Please enter your list of words. Let me do car, apple, apple, apple. Let's do apple misnamed. Apple. So if this worked, it should have three apples. And it did. Chris has three apples. Thank you for watching Academic Sports Guide for developing a programmer mindset. In this video, we solved the problem statement from start to finish, broke a problem down into smaller parts to make it easier to understand, used pseudocode and a flowchart to solve a problem, used loops and if statements, and walked through code to fix an error. Please read this video's description for further resources. We hope to work with you soon.